Hey guys, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this is the final video, the conclusion video of our, I think this is gonna be part four of our four part series where we were testing out converters. We were comparing the conversion of our print track of the PreSonus Quantum 4848 versus the Dangerous Music Convert AD Plus uh, box. And so if you have not seen parts one through three, I highly recommend that you stop this video now, click the link in the description box and go check those out because it'll lead up to everything I'm about to say. Part one, um, we actually did all the listening examples. We gave you guys a link in the description box to download the files so you could put them into your studio and listen to them and test any way you want. Part two is where we revealed which of the print tracks were which, which was the PreSonus, which was the Dangerous Music, because in the first video you didn't know. And then part three was uh, David SJ took the files back to his studio and did a little bit of a deep dive, a little bit of a geek out on the uh, on the scopes and on with audible line and uh, EQ curves and all that stuff to try to see what the differences are. And now this is part four, where we're gonna talk about number one, am I gonna keep the dangerous music? Do I think it's a worthwhile upgrade? And talk to you a little bit about my thinking around that. So that's what we're gonna do um, in this video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and all of that. Um, and um, so this will be more of a talking video. Again, I'm gonna try to keep it somewhat short, but I wanna explain myself because uh, if you don't want to listen to me ramble and talk about this stuff, then you can just stop the video and move on to something else, which is totally cool. But for people that want to know, and the only reason why this test is, is, is existing is because every time I do a live stream, one of the number one topics that come up over and over and over and over is about the converters. And we did a test a while back, about a year ago, where we, where we uh, tested the uh, Universal Audio X16 converters to the PreSonus Quantum 4848s. And at that time, I sold my Apollos and kept the PreSonus because to us, it sounded exactly the same. Again, you can go check the archive and go watch that three or four part series as well. And since that time, countless people have said to me, live on our live streams, hey Dave, have you ever considered upgrading the converters? Maybe not your whole 32 and 32 out, but maybe just your print track. You know, maybe with a better, higher quality, a box dedicated to just doing nothing but that analog to digital conversion on your final stereo print, you should get a little bit better results. And so I finally said, okay, a lot of you's recommended the Dangerous Music Convert A to D Plus, um, which is Dangerous Music is a wonderful company, makes great products, high quality products, and they're known for that. And I said, let's give it a try. So that's what we did. So go back and watch all the videos. So here's what I did in that, in, in the, in part two, where we, where we revealed which track was which, and we talked about what we were hearing in the room, myself and my buddy, David, um, I said at that time, I was gonna take a break, I was gonna come back the next day, and I was gonna listen again, alone in my studio with no one else here, you know, to, to give their opinions. And I also wanted to do it with another fresh set of years. I wanted to see if my opinion has changed from what I said in part two. And then on top of that, I wanted to do a couple of more tests with the, um, with the Dangerous Music. Um, I wanted to try to drive the converter a little bit harder and I wanted to try to use the, uh, the transformer a little bit more and the clip guard feature that's in there just to see if any of that really makes a big difference. And so I did all that. So as I'm sitting here right now, I just finished up the test. It was two days since that last video in time, right? So I didn't take a one day break, I took a two day break. And I came down here with a fresh set of ears and the very first thing I did was listen to the same tracks that we've been listening to this whole time. My opinion has not changed. I really, really struggle to hear any difference in the sonic quality, in the response of the transient, transients, any EQ difference, anything between the 4848 and the Dangerous Music box without the transformer, okay? When you put the transformer in, and you'll see that in part two, it's a different animal, the transformer makes a difference. But I didn't buy that for the transformer. I bought that just for the converters. We're talking just about the converters. I really don't hear any difference. Um, if there is a difference, as I said in part two, it is so microscopically subtle to me that it, it, it's, it's interchangeable, okay, to my ears, okay? So two times now I've listened to that. Uh, and I didn't spend a lot of time listening because if you listen to this thing long enough, you can convince yourself you hear anything, right? but I listened to the song from top to bottom and I switched back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, and uh, I could not hear a difference at all 
between those two and I know which one is which and I can't really hear a difference. So in the first video I'd said at the very intro of that song where it's just kick and snare with some reverb, I thought with the dangerous music, I thought I heard a little bit more of a tail on the reverb. Again, I, I think I might've heard that again today here, but I mean, it's so unbelievably subtle. So the other test that I did, just to, so you know, one of the advantages to having a converter box like dangerous music, where you have more headroom, meaning you can drive the box a little bit harder. So I did that. The first time around when we were printing the, the two prints, we pretty much came in pretty conservatively. Conservatively, I'm not one to, on my print track to drive it real hard. I'm usually coming in pretty conservative when I'm using the, the 48 PreSonus boxes. And then I'm using a limiter in the end to bring it up to level for a final track. Um, with something like the Dangerous Music, and I think the Dangerous Music has about 121 dB of headroom, where the PreSonus has about 119, I think, or 118. So there's definitely more headroom in the Dangerous Music. And so I did another print where I drove the box a little bit harder. I, I did one with the clip guard technology in that box and without it, uh, just to see driving it a little bit hotter and then normalizing things so I can compare them back and forth. And again, to me, I really didn't hear any difference. So by driving the box harder, other than the fact that the print track was then louder, it didn't sound any different to me. It sounded the same. So uh, again, I know for a lot of folks, you wanna drive the converter, you wanna clip the converters, and if you have better converters, you can clip them and get that clipping distortion that's pleasing. Um, and for recording and such, I understand that, but for my particular rig, that's not something I'm looking to do or something that I need here, but that's just, I wanted to try it. I figured while we have it here, let's try the box and let's try to exhaust all possibilities. Yes, I did use the clock and the dangerous music, to make sure that the clock was the dangerous music clock as well. Although I will say, we also ran a test that we didn't put on video. Um, I did a test where we ran it through the dangerous music, but used the PreSonus clock and then did it again with the dangerous music clock. And again, we couldn't hear any difference. I mean, if there's some jittering or something happening there, you don't hear it, at least we don't hear it. Uh, but everything that you guys have heard, if it, if it was a dangerous music print, it was using the dangerous music clocking, okay? So we made sure that we did that. So what are my final thoughts here? My final thoughts are is that, and a lot of people, I wanna make sure people um, don't misconstrue this. I think the Dangerous Music is a wonderful piece of gear. It is. Uh, this is not to say that the Dangerous Music is, is a bad converter. All I'm thinking and all I'm saying is that it's not, it's not that it's, 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 it's not, in other words, the PreSonus is a good converter too. They're, they're good, they're both two very good pieces of gear. Now, the PreSonus Quantum 4848, right now they're not making it anymore, but at the time when I bought it, that was the highest level quality and price point that PreSonus ever made in an audio interface, as far as I'm aware of. That's, that was their flagship audio interface. Okay, where if you don't know what that is, it's basically that box, the 4848 is all D sub 32 in, 32 out that I'm using on the console here. I have two of those to get me 64 in, 64 out. So it's, it's digital to analog and then it's analog to digital as I was printing back in as well on that particular box. Whereas the dangerous music is just a stereo input, right? It's just for taking it from analog and bringing it back to a two channel stereo with a couple extra features in the box, the transformer, the clip guard, some of those things. So um, they're both, very, from a converter point of view, I don't hear really any difference. Now again, some of you might've heard a difference and you've left comments in the other videos and that's fine, we all hear things differently and that's totally cool. I will also say that outside of myself and David, I sent those same two files that you all downloaded to two uh, of my colleagues that own a studio out in Los Angeles that are, uh, that, you know, that are, that are in the business, that do this stuff for a living and have for a long time, and both of them don't didn't know which one was which. It was a blind test, and both of them said to me they could hear absolutely no difference between the two tracks. So between the four of us, we did not hear a difference. Some of you may have, some of you may not have. Or if you did, or if anybody did, it was probably very, very subtle. So what I'm saying is the Dangerous Music is a great converter. It's a great box, it's a good quality piece of gear. I will say, from a quality build standpoint, you know, when you when you look at, when you put the two boxes in your hand, the Dangerous Music is a higher quality piece from a build quality perspective. It is, it feels better, it looks better, it's weight, it's hefty. 
the PreSonus is a little, is, isn't. Now, the PreSonus Quantum 4848, when it was for sale, was about 1500 US dollars. The Dangerous Music is $3,000. So it is twice the price. So some of that cost is, yes, you're getting a better, maybe a better physically built box. You also have tra a transformer circuit in the Dangerous Music, which adds to that cost. And there's some other things going on in there because it's not, the features aren't exactly one-to-one. -one. So the Dangerous Music is a better box. But for this test, for my studio, the whole point of this was, is this particular Dangerous Music converter a better, gonna give me a better product, a better print track, something that we could tangibly hear? And I don't hear the difference, just like I didn't with the Universal Audio. And that's not to say the Dangerous Music isn't good, it just says the PreSonus is a good converter as well. Are they the same converters in that box? I have no idea. I'm just telling you what I hear. Um, the other thing too is to keep in mind, what were we really listening for? Well, we were listening for everything from, is there any kind of a, an EQ change? Is there any kind of a smearing change or a more openness change? But really, what I am really was more focused on, when we talk about converters, I again, unless you're talking about a box such as like a Burl, for example, which is supposed to be a colored, you know, more of that colored sound, the Dangerous Music is supposed to be a transparent converter, meaning it, unless you're using the transformer circuit, and we were not for what we're talking about here. So it's not supposed to be adding any kind of color or tonality changes, just like the PreSonus is marketed as a transparent converter. So I would have expected that from an EQ perspective, they should sound almost identical, and they do. And that's not a bad thing in my mind for the dangerous music. That's a good thing because that's what I was looking for in this particular test. However, with a higher end converter, you know, the, the, you know, the word on the street is, or if you talk to a lot of people who would like talking about this stuff, one of the things that they, they've said to me is that, and even the people at sales, uh, the people at Sweetwater, even the people at Vintage King, when I've talked to some people that know about this stuff, even better than Uncle Dave, um, that what, what should we have maybe heard here? What they were saying you might hear with this box is, and again, we're not talking about, you shouldn't, you wouldn't expect to hear a 50% improvement. We're talking about the last five or 10%, and even 10% is probably being generous of a difference. And the difference that they told me you should be able to hear, and what I really tried to focus my listening on was a more maybe pronounce transient response. Maybe you get a little bit more kick on that, a little bit more crack on the kick and snare, like a little bit more of a, of a, of a, of a, of a pronounced transient. Um, you may also hear a little bit, a little bit more of an open sound. Maybe it's not smearing as much. If there's any smearing going on, that's really what you should hear in a higher end converter is that maybe if the converter was that much better, that some of those things would be present. And that was really where I focused my listening. More so than, does it sound like there's a different EQ curve? Because there's not. Um, and I didn't hear any of those things, me personally. And I really tried to focus and hear it, and I just don't hear it in this room that is well treated with my trin off room correction that you guys all know about. This, this is an accurate monitoring setup. I don't hear it. I, I just don't hear it. Again, if I listened to it four or five more times and I told myself there was something there, I'm sure I can convince myself that I'm hearing something different. But my first pass, my first two minutes of listening, I really don't hear a difference. I don't hear a difference. Now, when you go and you watch the video that David did, I think that'll be part three, where he did the, the, the little geek out. One of the things that he did in that video, if you didn't see it, which kind of confirmed, and this is why we did this video, because it confirms everything I just said to you guys. He put the EQ curves of both tracks right on top of each other in a plug-in, a plug-in to do that. And the, the curves are identical. They're right on top of each other. What does that mean? That means that we shouldn't hear a tonal difference in EQ. In other words, if one of these boxes had a little bit more pronounced pop end, maybe a little bit more presence, you would see that on an EQ curve. To some degree, you would see something. When you go back and watch Dave's video, those two curves from 20 to 20, are almost, they look to be identically on top of each other. And that makes sense. That's why I really don't hear an EQ difference. But I also don't hear that transient thing that I was told I should maybe hear or maybe a little bit more clarity or a little bit more openness. I don't hear that. So 
what are my conclusions 15 minutes into this video? My conclusions is the Dangerous Music is an awesome converter. It sounds really great. And if you have a studio where you just need a two track print, maybe you're not running a console, maybe you're running all in the box, you have a handful of pieces of hardware and you got to get out of the box, back into the box on a print track, right? And you don't need a PreSonus Quantum 4848, you don't need 32 IO, right? You have an, you know, you just need that stereo print and you want a transparent converter that has an additional feature with the transformer that can add a little bit of that color and stuff. And maybe you don't have that in some of your hardware that you have in your setup then I would say the Dangerous Music is a very good piece of gear. It sounds great. There's nothing wrong with that piece of gear. And that's one you may wanna consider. Transparent print track conversion with the addition of the transformer and the clip guard technology and some of the things that you can do to really hit the transformers on the mix back in, or uh, if, if you want to hit the converters, hit the transformer or if you're recording into that unit and you wanna drive that thing a little bit heavier, you're gonna have more headroom and maybe a little bit more of a pleasing effect than you would with a PreSonus interface doing the same thing. So, Dangerous Music is great. By the way, I'll link it in the description box. You can check it out at Sweetwater if you want. Yes, that's an affiliate link and thank you so much. Um, but for my use case, in this particular setup, for what I'm doing, is, that, is, there, an, is there enough of an upgrade for me to add this to my rig from my print track and spend three grand doing it? The answer is just no, it's not. It's not. Why? I really don't need the transformer circuit. I got so much gear here and saturation and stuff, and there's a cheaper way to do it. If I really wanted to, if I really wanted to add more transformers to my master bus chain, I could go out and get a nice set of uh, Neve or API preamps and stick them in the chain and get the same kind of effect, right? Again, I'm not looking to drive and clip the converter on the way back in. It's just not something that I'm into. It's not that it's bad. It's not something I'm into. So I don't need that. So unless that converter had the better transient response or had a little bit more of an open or wider sound, there's something sounded different to where I went, okay, the electronics in that box is giving us a better final result. I don't hear that. So for me, it's not worth it and it's going to go back but it's a great piece of gear. So probably in the future, in the near future, cause I'm working this out with Sweetwater um, and Vintage King possibly, um, because again, this is not sponsored. I paid for that. I put it on my credit card. I have my return policy. I'm gonna send it back. But the next thing I'd like to try, again, I don't think it will fit into this studio, but in the effort of bringing information, sharing and just learning for myself is I'd like to try the, the, the Burl B2 bomber. Now that, when you read about that, it's a little bit less money than this, but the cost doesn't really matter. Now that is very colored and it's, it's marketed as that. It's marketed as that to have the same kind of effect as tape, which for me will probably be a little redundant because I already have the Neve 542 tape emulators. So the Burl will probably sound different. I probably don't need that. But again, this channel is all about education, not only for me to try to educate you, but for me to educate myself. And so I wanna to listen to the difference because now I ha I'll have, I already have the results from the Universal Audio one we did about a year ago. I still have all those files and all those print tracks. We have the Dangerous Music now. And now I'd like to get another one in here, maybe something completely on the opposite spectrum like the Burl and check that out and see, well, what are the differences? Again, not better or worse, what's different? So it helps you make informed decisions based on your studio and what your gear needs are. The last one I'd like to try, at least for now, and I know there's others, I know Neve also makes what's called the MBC, the Master Bus Converter, which is again, a two-channel converter, D to A, or excuse me, A to D, uh, and also has not only that, but it has a limiter built in and it, with, with adjustable attack and release, which, which, which might be kind of cool. And it also has their famous uh, red and blue silk circuit, which is on the 542. So I don't know how redundant that will be. And it has transformers in it. A little bit more expensive than the Dangerous Music. About, I think that box is about 4,000 bucks. But again, what are the differences? Would that be a better fit here in this rig? I don't know. So maybe we're gonna find out. So that's kind of my little story around this particular test. It was a lot of fun. I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. And as I've said in all the videos in this particular series, and I say this in all our videos, but I know this particular topic sometimes gets people upset. 
again, be civil, be cool in the comments. Don't, don't be nasty to people. Everybody's opinion's valid. We all hear things differently and that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. If you like something, if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And your opinion is just as valid as mine or David SJ's or anybody else in the comments. So be cool. Let's, let's learn, share, and just talk. You know, this is the one thing this channel does not a lot of channels do, because I get rid of all the riffraff. You don't have to sift through all the idiots that, that all the social media trolls. I get rid of all those people, right? So. Uh, this is where we can really share and learn. And I'd like to know what you heard in all of this and what your thoughts are and what your setup is and what you've tried and what, you're per what you prefer. It's always good to learn from each other. So that's it for this video. Again, like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think below. Um, and you know, I think that's it for now, right? I think so. If there's not, if I think of more, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do another video. But thanks so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series and you got something out of it. And until the next video, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys in the next video.